We're here at the downtown Bentonville branch of yes, Harvest Bank. Yes, this has been here for a long time. I remember coming in as a kid. I, I already smell popcorn, so I know it's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. It's the cornerstone of, of Bentonville, really. I mean, we really think mm -hmm. that our vest is, is a cornerstone to downtown and we love being here on the square. It's an essential part to the community, really. And I want to talk about a little bit about the history of our vest because uh, it was established in 1961, but it's had phases of growth. Speak a little bit about that and then we'll talk about the future. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it, you know, it, it, ha it has a, an amazing past, uh, you know, started in 1961 really absolutely focused on being a community bank. Mm -hmm. uh, and Sam Walton made sure that this, this bank stayed here when he acquired a, a controlling stake in August of 1961. $3.5 million bank at that point in time, a $26.6 billion bank now uh, here in 2022. Um, the evolution through that time has been growth of households to over 100,000 100, households mm -hmm. across the bank group. We cover a four state uh, region now. Uh, and um, but really absolutely continue to stay focused on what was true then, which is our commitment to our communities, uh, focus on our excellence in customer service and our associates and what was true then still lasts to this day. And a commitment to customers, you know, we are going through a phase of growth and I want to quote your director of technology saying this is a once in several decades kind of transformation. So there was a catalyst for that growth around 18 months ago, and now there's this digital transformation coming. Yeah, I think what we saw, and, and I think what many financial services organizations saw across the country was, um, you know, customer preferences and patterns were changing to a little bit more of, of, of a, a digital nature. Um, and, and while that's not unique to financial services, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't something that we had dealt with at the amplification that we had particularly due to COVID, mm -hmm. really. That really began to drive, probably moved us forward five to seven years in the transformation journey. So we began to see our customer preferences changing and we knew that we had to invest in this digital transformation going forward, uh, evolving our products, our service set, but making sure we stayed true to our core focus of customer service excellence. It's really interesting because COVID hit all of us and we all had, obviously we didn't see it coming, and right. then had to make very quick adjustments. What did you learn during that short term, and then what have you learned long term that you'll adjust? You know, it, it, for a bank, mm -hmm. when we had to make the decision to close our doors and do everything through our drive-throughs, mm -hmm. um, that was a very drastic decision. But it also helped us become more creative than maybe we'd ever been in the past. We turned to our associates and we turned to our customers and said, how can we continue to serve you in the way that you need? And it really pushed folks forward in terms of using the digital tools that we had been building, mm -hmm. but really helped us to pause and say, what do we need to advance? How can we continue to evolve those tools to make sure that we are meeting the needs? Because they still had, they still had financial service needs. Mm -hmm. They still needed to be able to open accounts. They still needed to be access their funds. They still needed loans. Uh, they still wanted to buy homes. Right. Uh, and none of those things stopped. So we had to make sure that our technology focus um, continued and it really pushed us forward from asking what can we do better and we actually turned our transformation on its side a little bit we really began focusing on the customer experience we always had mm -hmm. talked about customer service excellence but we began asking and really having conversations with customers through our customer experience team saying what do you need now and what can we build to help you in your financial journey? What they tell you? Yeah, yeah. so the, the immediate real-time access to right. information. I mean, which shouldn't surprise us. We want that we everywhere. All, we want that. My phone's like three feet away. And that's, a, yeah. that's exactly. I mean, you know, you, you have it. You have the the pings that come up and tell you what's going on mm -hmm. in, in the news, or uh, you know how we changed in the hospitality sector or the service sector, the food service industry. They all adapted, but they want mm -hmm. that real-time information. And so, when we started thinking about that. That meant we had to evolve some of our processes too. It wasn't just our digital tools, but the processes of how we make mm -hmm. movement on payments mm -hmm. or how we uh, process a loan from start to finish. Uh, and so, but this real time information means we've got to be better with our data. Um, so that meant an overhaul of our, of our data uh, set. It meant that we also needed to look at moving to the cloud mm -hmm. um, because we wanted to go to a next generation core, which we have now hired our partner, a thought machine for our next generation core, mm -hmm. and that will be cloud-based. And that then sets us forward to real-time information to you, uh, make a deposit, be able to see that 
almost instantaneously. And you don't always have to come into a bank anymore to do a lot of these things. So we're going to go on a little trip to mm -hmm. see an ATM live teller. Tell us how that evolved and came to be and, and what we can expect to see when we We'll yeah. Check it out. Yeah, so we'll see this ATM with Live Teller, mm -hmm. which is a which is a great tool uh, for customers to be able to access at many points in various communi communities. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely here in in the Northwest Arkansas area mm -hmm. for sure, but allow them the convenience, but still have a high focused customer service touch, and that's mm -hmm. what. We want to continue to be a community bank, Dana. We want to continue to, to deliver against these, the expectations that our founders set for us. Um, so that high touch aspect is, is extremely important to us. This ATM with Live Teller is a way to do that. So we're going to yeah. grab our popcorn because Fantastic. it is Friday and we're going to go for a little walk in downtown Bentonville and have a little more of a conversation. Perfect. Perfect. Right, Look forward to it. Yeah. The ATM also offers extended hours because it's not in the confines of the of branch, a branch right. right yeah for sure it convenience is, is a, another cornerstone right. uh, of our rest and by having this off-site um, we have remote associates that are working it so it allows them to service customers from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. so it again a great opportunity for our customers but also it's it's it's, it's great access to downtown you know, one of the things, you're going to see some bikers coming down the road here in a second. Yeah, we might see a few. We are the, what, the mountain biking mountain capital Mountain biking world. capital of the world. And <laughs> so we even see some some mountain bikers that are stopping by and using our ATM with Live Teller, which is, which is super cool to see uh, in our community. Um, but convenience is at the essence here. You kind of do have to cater to a little bit of everyone, because we do. We're on foot. We're on bikes. We're on, I see those one wheelers. Like this ATM could cater to everyone downtown. You grew up here, Dana. <laughs> You've seen the change. I've been here for yes. most of my life as well. And the activity that we see in our communities, in particular here in downtown Pentonville, is awesome. So we've got to be able to serve all their needs. And this this ATM with Live Teller does give us that opportunity. These are live tellers in our community. They're people that you might potentially know. It's not something that's outsourced or people from other countries no, or other that's cities. That's absolutely right. And then that gets back to our focus on customer service excellence. These are RVS associates. They are, uh, they've been many times, they've been working for us many, many years. They're likely are sitting in probably in our Lowell facility. I think we have some that may be in, in Tulsa and Fort Smith, but they're, they're, Associates that understand the RVS culture, that understand our service culture, and our focus uh, on our and our service perspective. From that perspective. Now, I told you, I'm going to ask one of them to call the hogs. That's perfectly. So that proves you're local. I will that, know you're local. That's exactly right. Now, if you talk to somebody in, in, in Tulsa, Tulsa, they they may they may say go Pokes or, or they may go Boomer Center, but it's okay. All in, all in good fun. I will be respectful of their yeah. sports. Yeah. Hopefully, they're calling the hogs like 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 I do though. <laughs> but yeah, you, mm -hmm. so you can drive up, you can walk up uh, here, you can bike up. And uh, here we are. And literally, it's just as simple as touching the screen and, and you'll be talking to an associate in, in no time. Oh, we're, we're here with Aaron, right here. He is a, a, an ATM with, with live teller specialist. So he happens to be sitting in Lowell. And so we could literally uh, transact any business here, ask him questions. He could guide us if, if, it's, if we needed to see somebody in person, he could help us. But they're available eight to eight. And we've seen great use. Again, walk up, drive up bike up, a great, a great uh, tool for our customers. Arvis Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender.